Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I think we're ready to begin. Thank you all for coming today. I'm Roger Remington, a Vignelli professor here in the uh, Vignelli Center for Design Studies. Uh, it's appropriate today that we uh, take just a moment uh, to uh, remember our good friend and donor, Massimo, Massimo Vignelli, who passed away on May 23rd. Uh, and the irony of it all is that it was Massimo's suggestion directly that we uh, have a Pierre Mendel exhibit here at RIT, so in a way we're kind of uh, fulfilling our, uh, our uh, responsibility to, uh, to our great friend and patron, Massimo Vignelli. I'm very pleased to see all of you, and uh, I hope that uh, most of you can stay for the next uh, uh, 45 minutes or so and hear Annette's um, presentation. Uh, tomorrow morning, up in the uh, uh, Hamlin uh, Design Study Room in the uh, Vignelli Center, we will be having an informal roundtable with Annette. If any of you would like to come to that, you're welcome. Uh, she's going to make a few comments there as part of that, and then she and I are going to come down with everybody, and we'll do a little gallery walk. So you're all welcome to, uh, to come and participate in that as well. Uh, our guest um, trained as a draftswoman and studied visual communication and graphic design at the University in Kassel in Germany and at the State Art School for Design in Karlsruhe. She was part of the uh, famous Yale Summer Program in Graphic Design in Brasago. In 1997, she began working as an assistant to Pierre Mendel, the designer of all these great posters, and she stayed in that position until 2008. Uh, she worked in that capacity on several projects with him, and then since his passing, since 2009, she's been manager of the Pierre Mandel Design Studio in Munich, Germany. So please join me in welcoming Annette Kruger. Okay, I'm really glad to be here to be part of this wonderful exhibition and exhibition opening and that I have the possibility to do this presentation. Um, please excuse my English, it might be not the very best, but um, I think it will work. At first, I want to thank you, dear Roger, for this excellent um, organization of the whole exhibition to enable the project and also a Katie Mix and Jennifer Whitlock and I want to express my thanks um, dear Bruce Jan Mader and your students for the beautiful graphic design. I also want to thank very much Betsy Merkett and Jessica Erickson for their great work. This is a wonderful exhibition called The Combination and Hanging of the Posters. Um, it's beautiful. I want to express my great thanks to Massimo Vignelli, who once had the idea and who had recommended this exhibition. Both Pierre Mandel and Massimo win Vignelli passed away, but their spirit will linger on in their works. Today I want to show you some of Pierre Mandel's and the studio's work, and you will see some more recent works and some that are um, more than 40 years ago. Uh, Pierre Mandel was born in Essen in Germany. 1934 he emigrated to France and later on, 1947, he went to the USA, where he lived for six years in California. 1953, he went, uh, went back again to France to work in his family's textile factory. 1958, he decided to study graphic design with Armin Hoffmann at the Basel School of Design, both during um, during and for one year after his studies, he worked 
in the studio of Michael Michael Engelmann in Munich, and this this was a well-known graphic designer in Germany that time. Shortly after, he founded the studio Mendel in Obra in Munich together with Klaus Obra, who had also studied in Basel. And after a fruitful working period of 40 years, they separated in 2000. Since then, the studio is named Pierre Mandel Design Studio. And at the end of 2008, Pierre Mandel passed away after six years of illness. During this time of illness, he worked furthermore with some help. Um, Pierre Mandel was a member of the Alliance Graphique Internationale and honorary royal designer of the Royal Society of Arts in London. Um, the Pierre Mandel Design Studio is situated in the center of Munich and the studio is the four windows in the middle. Um, this is the river nearby, it's Isar and it's a view from, from a bridge nearby. That's me opening the front door um, a few years ago. I studied at the design department, as Roger mentioned, in Karlsruhe with um, Professor Gunther Rambo. He's also a poster designer. Um, I worked 11 years as assistant, and as Roger mentioned, then I continue the studio with a friend of Pierre Mandel, who is the chief director of the studio. This is the meeting room, the conference room, where the presentation work take place. Um, tells a few into the green. And now some works, which will show Pierre Mandel's way to bring the message to the people. On the left side, you see a logo for a classical musical festival in Aix-en-Provence, a combination of two type characters and on the right side, a one lying at its back. Pierre Mendel himself brought it into the forest. He made a series of different one, and those three works are a part beside the graphic design. Um, this poster says design is an art that makes itself useful. And um, the text is from the writer Carlos Obas, this poster were made in 1991 and without computers. And when once the designer Paul Rand visited the studio, he saw the handmade cut it out um, paper on the wall and asked Pierre Mandel if he's mad to do all um, the, to cut out all those um, little pieces of paper. The Museum of Applied Art, it's now named International Design Museum in Munich was a client for more than 35 years. And for this museum, Pierre Mandel did a range of posters and some were deeply honored in graphic poster competitions. On the right side, you see a P. The P is an exhibition poster for the artist Palermo. He worked with simple space and primary colors, the same elements that Pierre Mandel used for the poster design. The left one, The Age, is an exhibition poster for Armin Hoffmann. He's also poster designer and Pierre Mandel's teacher in the Basel School of Design in the 60s. You can see the tools he uses. After his studies, Pierre Mandel became a close friend of Armin Hoffmann. And I want to mention, um, he sent a greeting card on Monday. He knows um, he's still living um, with his wife, Dorothea Hoffmann in Luzerne. And he said that he's very glad about this exhibition and that he give his warmest regards to all who know him. The left poster is for a book presentation of the industrial designer Franco Clivio. The book title is Hidden Forms, and the theme um, are intelligent, a collection of intelligent and remarkable objects not obviously designed. Pierre Mandel and I worked together on this poster, and it was, together with the book, his last work. On the right side, you see poster Visit Us in the New Pinacothek. 
this poster is for a museum which shows all well-known artists from the 20th century, as you can see, Picasso, Klimt, and so on. Here you see an image campaign for the state art museums. The logo is a play with the German words museum and umsehen. The turn from the letter M into U changes the meaning of the word. Umsehen is the German word for looking around and behind yourself. The color gradient was used within the type of several of these museums. And some more works with type. This dictionary was designed in the 70s. You can easily put back the book you have read. Pierre Mandel also did some logotypes. Here's the logotype for Siemens, the global powerhouse the elect in electrical engineering. The typeface is a redesign of an old one, also without serif, which was developed by Pierre Mandel together with Heinz Hildbrunner, a typography who drew the characters. It might be surprising, but Pierre Mandel always worked only with one or three employees. I was surprised about that when I began my work at the studio. Um, and he worked mostly with one other person on a project. This was the same with the Siemens logo and the graphic manual. The elaboration of the works, um, the elaboration of the manual, um, the application of the logo, logo was done in-house by Siemens. And here another logo and corporate identity for Vitra. Um, Vitra is a company which produces high quality furniture, um, often designed by well-known persons like Ray and Charles Eames or Werner Panton. And I think here in the US such furniture is called, uh, is sold by Herman Miller. Um, on the left side the logo with a point at the end and on the right side a little book with um, some furniture and um, some explanations inside. It's the overview, the a little brochure. And on the left the shopping bag for Vitra and a magazine. The, um, the work spirit. It is done also with this four spaces and with the grid of this four spaces, um, typography and images of the inner pages are a simple but striking play also with this four spaces. In the exhibition you can see a manual which is done by the studio itself, but it is a really short manual. Some other works with type. On the left, a poster for a small theatre which, which has not much money. All posters for it are made by cutting up newspapers. And new, this is a poster for an in, another poster for the International Design Museum for an exhibition of new pieces of donations in their collection. Pierre Mandel used simple type often only one typeface, accidents grotesque or futura. He's also, it is also the element of the square here, which is visible through the form of the type characters and the space in between. And this poster is a part of the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And these are two typographic posters for language courses of the Munich Public University. The word love is translated in several languages and visualized by the type characters of each country. Here you can see Hebrew and Arabic. And another corporate identity. The logo type and the packaging for a gourmet food, sto food store in Munich who is also famous for its coffee. It is a store, I think a little bit like Dean and Delacque. The logo type is also a redesign. Before, the logo was set in an old-fashioned, a little bit more squiggled typography. Dalmayer has been purveyor to the Bavarian ancient court for a long time. 
So Pierre Mandel decided to leave the old-fashioned type, but to use it a little bit more simple, and he dropped the emblem. Additional, he used the colored bars for the labels and boxes. Here you can see some glasses of marmalade, vinegar, oil, and a box of cook cookies. An illustrator was chosen to do all these illustration, illustrations for the labels in the same way. And these two legs are a picture of an advertisement for a pharmaceutical company for a medicine against pain in the knees. The typography became, becomes legs. This leads us to another kind of elements visible in the designs. The X-ray photograph is the image for another ad for a medicine against rheumatism in the hands. And this for a medicine against hay fever. All three are made more than 40 years ago in the 60s. Those ads distill the message in a humorous way. At that time, Pierre Mandel did several pharmaceutical ads and this against hay fever was well known from his teacher. Pierre Mandel was named the man with the green nose. Here you see a second image poster for the International Design Museum on the left side, for a museum of the future. The imagery of all these posters are an important part of the corporate identity of the museum. On the right side, there is poster as you like it for the opera, for the Bavarian State Opera in Munich. It is based on a comedy of Shakespeare and masks play an important role in the libretto. The Bavarian State Opera was client of the studio for 13 years. And another part of the human body, the content of this book are the dirty experience of Mr. Charles Bukowski. And these two posters are also part of the corporate identity of the opera and the ballet. The left one is for a modern ballet, The Threatened Murderer, and the right one for Tristan and Isolde, an opera from Wagner, the German composer. The first opera posters had something like a frame, as you can see on the left. The position and size of the type in this frame is always the same. And later you will see that the opera posters are often vividly colored, abstract portrayals with silhouette effect. And in the beginning they were often made with a method papier collé, a, collage, a paper collage technique. Sometimes you can find posters hanging on fences and walls beside building sites in Germany. This is always nice. Normally you will find the posters on columns. There, these are the posters for the opera Slaughterhouse 5 and the theme of this opera is an air crash during the Second World War. Pierre Mandel used the swastika as a propeller. And Pierre Mandel made 20 to 12 posters a season in one year um, for the opera. I often worked with him on these posters. The left poster is for Don Giovanni, another opera poster. And the theme is, uh, it has to do with sexuality, the church and a woman. And Pierre Mandel was a great admirer of Remo Savignac, a famous French poster designer from the last century, and he once said, a good poster has to be a scandal. This poster was a scandal in Munich in 1994. The Catholic Church protested against it while it was hanging in front of the opera. But Pierre Mandel also designed a poster for an ecclesial theme, the church and the arts. This was for an exhibition of ecclesial applied art. It is made with less means, as you can see, simple but striking. Um, it was honored in poster competition with prizes and some other crosses. Left you see a poster for um, Swiss book design and 
on the right side a, a poster which hung just in front of the old Museum for Applied Art in Munich when it was closed for reconstruction. And it says that it is, yes, it's closed. Um, each time Pierre Mandel searched and found adequate means so that content and form of the designs go hand in hand. Sometimes the working process took weeks. At the end, the design looks simple, you can't see the effort. And that's what Pierre Mandel wanted and always said, you should not see the effort, the design should express lightness. This is the wall in the studio, and it was a study of a stage design for the ballet. We have no photograph from the original stage, but I tried to explain the idea. Um, the background of the stage was a huge wall of textile um, with the stripes behind the dancers. The white stripes were transparent, and behind you could see the orchestra sitting. And now, some other works with stripes. Left a shopping bag for a shoe boutique, also with lines. And the three M's um, form six mountains. This is the logo for the Messner Mountain Museum, the famous uh, museum of the famous mountain climber Reinhold Messner. Both type designs are from the Futura typeface, often used by Pierre Mandel. And he also created announcement for friends. This, these are two announcements for the moving from one house to another. And on the left side, a poster for an architectural photographer. You can't see any photograph. Um, he see, he um, did very graphically black and white photographs. The poster on the right side is for an exhibition for an interior designer, Massimo Silvestrin, and his tool, a T-square and its shadow in space. Pierre Mandel often used flat, simple forms, but also in comparison with other means. Here, the two, two examples of perspective. And the title of this book on the left is Sinking. The typography becomes an image by drawing the horizontal line and turning the type a little. On the right side, you see a love letter without words, which Pierre Mendel once wrote for a girlfriend. She's, this is one of a series of hearts you can see also in the exhibition, which were collected and printed in a limited number of copies. And the opera, Il Ritorno di Ulisse in Patria, is about Ulysses' long journey and his yearning to come back in Patria. This tiny isle in the center is the perfect way to visualize the longing, at first sight, so to see. And another poster, The Flying Dutchman, is about a man who sails with his ghost ship over the ocean. We spent a long time working on this poster also at the computer. From that time on, the designs were often combinations of digital and handmade, handmade work. With the poster of the Flying Dutchman, Pierre Mandel won the Ecograda Excellence Award in 2008. And this is a glimpse into the studio. In the background, you can see again, it's also a few years ago, you can see the, um, um, by the computer. And um, in the background, you can also see some studies for opera posters. Design process automobile announces an exhibition of car design. And Pierre Mandel used a surprising image for a car from underneath, and he shifted the optical weight into the corner instead of, as it is usually used, expanded it out from the center. You can find this poster in the collection of Museum of Modern Art, and it's published in one of a series of the 100 best posters from Europe and the United States in 1995. Pierre yeah, Mandel um, once said to me, it's not every day Sunday. You can do eight or 10 outstanding posters in your life, but not more, he thought. And this is only one, I think. 
Here you see a design for a BMW sports car. And that was Pierre Mandel's idea uh, for a promotion campaign for Lubri Film, a company which inscripts cars. And some other dots and spots left a shopping bag for a sports fashion boutique and on the right a logo for a sports park where you can play golf in the city. This poster is for an opera with the cruel story of Macbeth. The themes are violence and murder. It is another direct formulation created only with simple means, only few colors. Pierre Mandel was convinced that a simple formulation conveys the message best among the increasing flood of images in our present world. And here the left poster announced an exhibition for the studio in cell itself in 1990 in Germany. And on the right side on the column are posters for an exhibition in the international in the Design Museum, Japanese posters. And this posters with the enrolled red spot got several prizes. The medium, the paper portrays itself and reflects also its limitations. And this is a humor underlying most of Pierre Mandel's posters. It is the same for Japanese packaging. The flag is half covered with crumpled Japanese paper and this is the most wanted poster um, from, the, from the museum and from our clients. The photographs and posters were often made by Klaus Obra, the former partner of Pierre Mendel. On the right side, a cover for a graphic magazine, and this was designed in 1962. This is one of the oldest works from Pierre Mendel, but it is actual as ever. It is timeless, like many other of the works. And another exhibition poster with a Japanese flag for men's clothes Japan in front of the museum. This, this shows the highly abstract and concentrated pictorial language of Pierre Mendel very well, I think. We work together on the typography of this poster. Another one is for an exhibition of posters in Osaka in Japan. The flag becomes a man cloth different from the abstract posters. Your eye will complete the missing outline around the rectangle. Japanese people like this posters with Pierre Mandel's bare feet. Um, the idea for this poster was born when Pierre Mandel got ill and couldn't travel to the exhibition himself, so his image traveled. And these two posters are from a series of four posters for the Ring of Wagner. The formal context is built by the rainbow colors in progress. And here you see the third and the fourth motif, Siegfried and Götterdämmerung, the twilight of the gods. And now some other works with squares. Left, now, left a logotype for the Industrial Forum Hanover, an organization which supports industrial design and the designers. The short form of the name of this organization is IF, and both letters, the I and the F, were built up by a grid of nine spaces and out of simple geometric forms, mostly squares. This was also done together with Heinz Hildbrunner. The poster was for an exhibition of young industrial designers, the poster on the right side. The square consists of four triangles, the tools were used for the work. And for the exhibition, poster quilts of the Amish abstraction and power color geometric areas were found. You can see no original but the principle on which a quilt is based. On the right side for the op, um, a poster for the opera Aida, you can immediately recognize the threat of fate.
This poster was for an ex exhibition of the architect Marcello Morandini. It shows a graphic pattern consisting of squares and a graphically play with type. This is the adequate picture for the works of Morandini who has often used graphical patterns for his objects and for his architecture. On the right side, another logo. This is for the International Design Center Berlin, consisting of three graphical basic forms, the square, triangle and the circle. The Design Center provides support for designers but also plays and organizes three-dimensional exhibitions. For this, the logo is three-dimensional. On the left side, the image poster or another image poster for the International Design Museum and the triangle is, sorry, the triangle is replaced by the heart. The title, I love design. And this piece of torn paper became water, waves and a sail. This poster was for a sailing regatta. The organizers did not publish it, but Pierre Mendel nevertheless got some posters printed and those won several prizes and this old poster is often published in books and so on in other kinds of design. This poster is for the opera The Rape of Lucretia. Pierre Mendel found an amazing motive for the cruel story. I worked with him on this poster and it was an ongoing process beside the work on other projects. Um, I remember me um, hour by hour and day by day um, then uh, tearing and bending the paper. Another triangle is the logo for Capsugel. This was for a promotion campaign for a medicine in capsules in the 60s. Those capsules were absolutely new at that time and beside the work on advertisements for Parker Med you saw at the beginning, Pierre Mandel did several ads for Capsugel. The picture on the right side is an illustration for that purpose. And now a few people. At first a poster for the Goethe Institute of Language Courses. Goethe, the famous German poet, speaks several languages and Pierre Mandel did a gouache, a means, a means which he rarely used. Left you can see another opera poster for Orfeo. He has lost his beloved wife and has the chance to get her back if he doesn't look back. He turns his head as you can see. And the right one is an image poster for the National Museum in Munich which shows ancient cultures and history from a period of the Middle Ages to the beginning of the 20th century. Even a modern typeface here, the Futura, set in the right spacing, gets a classical e expression if it's used in an appropriate way. This poster is for a social theme, an exhibition about employees in general. A large number of people in society are employees. So the idea was born to show the person out of focus, anonymous. And this kind of poster pillar is seldom but often used for election posters which shows the head of the candidate. <coughs> Art Opens the Eyes is an image poster for the Bavarian State Art Museums and all those eyes are part of pictures of their sculptures or um, their collections. And the phrase on the right says, visit the Bavarian State Art Museums. That's me working on a design at the computer together with Pierre Mandel. I'm sorry for the quality of this picture. It's a video print. There are very few um, pictures of um, Pierre Mandel together with his assistants. Um, most of the time, he watched the work progress and he gives his advice. I worked on several operas, opera posters together with Pierre Mandel and here is another one. This is the poster for Don Carlo. It was a pope of the Middle Ages, a cruel and bad person, so without a face. Pierre Mandel revised the portrait of Valaquet. 
and with a series of five posters, this included, he was deeply honored with the first prize of the International Biennial of Theatre posters in Poland in 2005. And two others for the opera, Romeo and Juliet, the great love story on the left, and um, Falstaff, he's a self-confident person, so he presents himself. This is the front um, side of the opera building in Munich during the Opera Festival, which takes place every year in Munich in June and July. You can see the festival flags in front, and the symbols were part of the corporate identity of the opera. The heart stands for love, the crown for power, the cross for death, and the lips for erotic. Every libretto deals with these themes. On the right, a program poster, which with the events of the whole year. And um, I should mention that time um, the director of the opera was Sir Peter Jonas, the former director of the English National Opera. And his aim was to bring the opera to the people into the streets. And this, that was the perfect combination um, of work then with Pierre Mandel. The monthly program posters on the wall in the subway. The four symbols in the corner help to recognize the Bavarian State Opera immediately. The symbols were penetrated in a short period of time. And here you see an initiative against racism of Pierre Mandel himself in 1995, all men are created equal. Every few years, Pierre Mandel started such an initiative. He developed an idea we designed a poster and searched for sponsors. The printing company who produced all those posters for our clients printed this one for free, and the company which sells the places for the poster columns gave it also for free. And this is another poster for oh sorry, it's the next another poster for the Association of Orphans Children's Home. The child has got a roof over its head. This is for UNICEF and it's called the liberation of love. This is one against drugs and an initiative from Pierre Mandel and the studio and from Art Concerts, an open air agency. They want to do something against the consumption of drugs during concert events. It was pr produced in 1993 and his assistant at that time moved some flower day by day at least. It was the perfect form of skull. Another initiative of the studio is Share, which hung on East in 2004 on the columns in Munich. This is another poster I worked on together with Pierre Mendel and working for him and experiencing how ideas became form was every time inspiring. And I am thank very thankful for that. Tolerance is a campaign for patience and understanding between cultures. The letters are consisting of the type of several languages. The first sketch was also made by cutting up foreign newspapers. And the last self-initiative is this poster in English, Love. It was published after Pierre Mandel passed away in April 2009. Pierre Mandel's idea was to create an image for freedom in the Middle East region. Pierre Mandel's aim was to create simple but clear and intelligent designs which bring them the message to the point. He recognizes the basic forms of design in the subject for which he designed posters and icons and logos. And then he exploited these forms masterfully. At least all works became visual interesting, elegant and striking with a sense of humor and often with poetry. So the work also addresses our hearts. Pierre Mandel loved to live even when he was ill during the last six years. And so he chose an illustration for his own obituary made by himself with the words, I had a beautiful life. 
and he designed a poster for an exhibition of Massimo Vignelli, which took place also in the International Design Museum in Munich. On the right side, you can see Pierre Mandel together with Massimo Vignelli at the meeting of the Allianz Graphic International in Italy. Pierre Mandel was also always a great admirer of Massimo Vignelli's work. He would be honored to get this wonderful exhibition at the Vignelli Design Center for at the Vignelli Center for Design Studies at the RIT in both galleries. And I think Massimo Vignelli would have been glad to have this exhibition here, which he once recommended. We can be thankful for many inspiring, beautiful and outstanding images they made for us. And I'm very thankful that, can do, that I can do a little bit to spread his spirit to the people. Thank you. If you have some questions, you're welcome to ask, so I will try to answer. What, what was Mandel's first success? How did he get his, how did he get his break? How did he get known? Um, he himself at, um, gave once an answer. I don't know if he um, then it, will, it is well known, but it was in the 60s and it, it first work was an ad. It's not in this presentation. Um, it was one of his first works and it was published in a um, newspaper. And he said, I got up really very early to buy 50 copies of these newspapers and at that moment I know I've got it. That was the point and then I have only to um, go on. That's what he once mentioned. <laughs> hmm. I think, yeah, that was in the 60s, beginning, middle of the 60s. I think that has to do, maybe, um, that will explain a little bit more with this, um, it was the same time with this pharmaceutical ads. This were the first works. I think from that time on, he was well known. So um, uh, they got some um, jobs from Michael Engelmann, which I mentioned, because he uh, couldn't work anymore. And that was um, the start, I think. Question? I'm wondering, what, where did he get his inspiration from? Um, where, where did the ideas come from, do you know? Ah, yes, um, he had an answer on that too, because he said it's my everyday life. When I go through the streets, I'm watching what's going around, and um, he didn't say some very special. He mentioned, um, yes, it's the everyday life, my surroundings, and that's uh, what I'm, uh, I'm inspired by, I think. Yes, he loved um, maybe, yeah, to, to have some cultural events, the opera, or I think they get inspired through that, but also to the daily life in the streets. Well, thank you very much, Annette. I think it's highly significant that many of the slides that uh, she showed us show the posters in their environment. And uh, this, this tells us how important posters are in terms of, Euro of European environment versus American environment. We don't see posters being so functional here as, as they do in Europe. And it was so nice to see so many of them in their real environment and what a difference they made, especially as they become repetitive elements. Thank you all very much for coming and watch for the next Design Conversations lecture next month. <laughs>